the atom contains three subatomic particles. This one has a negative charge, and it's the electron. So electrons have a negative charge, they're found outside the nucleus and the electron cloud, and their mass is so small that we say it's negligible. Negligible meaning basically zero. So make sure that you're writing this stuff down, as well as labeling the electron. Over here we have a positive. The positive is a proton. A proton has a positive charge and a mass of 1.673 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. That's such a small number of grams that we have a different unit when we're talking about subatomic particles and the mass of atoms. We say 1 AMU. So AMU stands for Atomic Mass Unit. So you don't have to know the mass of a proton in grams. We're going to say you should know the mass of a proton in AMUs. So again, make sure that you have this written down in your notes. The center section is what we refer to as the nucleus. And the nucleus is made up of protons. And then the orange one up here is our neutron. Neutrons are neutral, meaning they do not have a charge. They have the same mass as a proton, and therefore they also have a mass of 1 AMU. So notice that the nucleus here in the center has the two particles that have mass. And I have a neutral and a positive charged particle, therefore the nucleus is positively charged and very dense. The nucleus takes up very little space and yet contains all of the mass basically from the atom. The electron cloud takes up most of the space and its mass is very negligible, so the electron cloud would be a very low density. Pause the video if you're still writing any of this. So let's look at how these three particles would react when placed or fired into an electrical field. So on the top we have a negatively charged plate and on the bottom we have a positively charged plate. So if we shoot an electron through this, electrons have a negative charge and so would they be attracted to negative? or would they be attracted to positive? If you said positive, you're correct, because opposites attract. If we look at the proton, the proton should be attracted to the negative or positive plate. If you said positive plate, you are correct. And then a neutron should be attracted to the negative or positive plate. You said neither. Again, you're correct. Because it's neutral, it would go straight through being non-deflected. If we look at all of them together, notice that the electron is pulled off much easier or deflected much easier than the proton because the electron had very little mass and so it doesn't take as much to sway it towards the positive plate. While a proton being much heavier is going to take a lot more energy to deflect it to the negative plate. You may want to draw that little electrical field in your notes. So what two particles are located inside the nucleus of an atom? So you should say protons and neutrons. We just saw that picture a second ago. So protons and neutrons are located in the nucleus of the atom. So atoms are always neutral particles. Again, this is atoms are always neutral, which means what two particles have to equal each other. Well, in order to stay neutral, the protons and electrons have to equal each other. So reading the periodic table, one very important number that you need to recognize is the atomic number. The atomic number 
is the number of protons. The atomic number is this top number on the periodic table. It identifies the element and it's different for every element. Here we can see on the periodic table, we have the top number and the top number is different for every single element. So the protons determine which element you have. If you change the number of protons, you change the element. So if a question asks how many protons sodium has, step one is you need to find sodium. So sodium is right here. And I look at the top number. It's an 11, so sodium has 11 protons. Go ahead and do oxygen and sulfur. Restart the video when you have those two done. So there's oxygen, there's sulfur. Oxygen has eight and sulfur has 16. If it asks how many electrons something has, since we're talking atoms and they didn't tell us that this has a charge, our protons and electrons should equal. So since we had 11 protons for sodium, we should also have 11 electrons for sodium. We're gonna figure out your electrons for neon and magnesium. Restart when you're done. So there's neon and there's magnesium. So neon you should have said was 10 and magnesium you should have said was 12. The other number that's on the periodic table is the average atomic mass. It's the average of all the isotopes masses of an element. While mass number is the number of protons and the number of neutrons. If you're not given a specific mass number like in this problem, this one it says aluminum-27, that 27 is the mass number. On the periodic table, notice it's not a whole number because again, that's a rounded av or that's an average of all the different isotopes masses. We'll be talking about what an isotope is in a few minutes. But if you're not given the mass number, then we're gonna round this average atomic mass to the nearest whole number. So since mass number is protons plus neutrons, if we're trying to find out how many neutrons an element has, we need to do mass number minus atomic number. So for our example over here for aluminum, we would say that aluminum has a mass number of 27. Aluminum's atomic number is 13. So 27 minus 13 is 14 neutrons. And then for our potassium example, since we weren't given the mass number, we say that we have a mass number of 39. So 39 minus the atomic number of 19 gives me 20 neutrons. So one more, it says, how many neutrons does magnesium 24 has, have? So the first thing you wanna do is find magnesium. So here's magnesium. It has an atomic number of 12. I don't care what the average atomic mass is because they gave me the mass number. So mass number minus atomic number gives me my neutrons, which is 12. Go ahead and pause the video and do chromium 52 and carbon 12 to find your number of neutrons. Chromium is here in the middle, and carbon is right there. So there's chromium, there's carbon. Go ahead and pause the video, figure out your neutrons, restart when you have your answer. So chromium had an atomic number of 24. So 52 minus 24 gave us 28 neutrons. And then carbon has an atomic number of six. So 12 minus six should have given you six neutrons for carbon. So we referred to an isotope a minute ago. An isotope just means that we have the same number of protons. So same number of protons, which means it's the same element. If they're different elements, they cannot be isotopes of each other, but different numbers of neutrons. If they have different numbers of neutrons, then they have different masses. So each isotope has a different mass number. So here we have hydrogen one, hydrogen two, and hydrogen three. In hydrogen one, we have one proton, 
but zero neutrons. Hydrogen two, we have one proton and one neutron. And in hydrogen three, we have one proton and two neutrons. For our next example, helium three and helium four. Helium three has two protons and one neutron. Helium four has two protons and two neutrons. Notice that when I add these numbers up, I'm getting the mass number. Also notice that the protons are all the same. It's the neutrons that are changing. The protons are the same, the neutrons are changing. In lithium three, notice you've got three protons in both because if I didn't have three protons, it would no longer be lithium. The only thing that's changing is my number of neutrons. So isotopes have to have the same number of protons, but different masses. So pause the video, figure out how many protons and neutrons each of these carbon isotopes have. We saw earlier, here's where carbon is. So the only thing we need from the periodic table is that atomic number, which is six. Since the atomic number is six, I should have six protons in both of them. But to get neutrons, I would do 12 minus six to give me six neutrons. And in this one, I would do 14 minus six to give me eight neutrons. So these are isotopes of each other since they are the same element, but with different masses. Okay, let's put everything that we've learned together and fill out this chart. We're gonna do the first two rows together and then we'll let you do the last four and then check them. So for this first one, we see that we have lithium. So we look on the periodic table and find lithium from there, I can see that lithium has an atomic number of three. Since its atomic number is three, it also has to have three protons. These two always equal each other. At this point, I no longer need the periodic table. I know my electrons are also three because all of these are atoms, which means they're all neutral. And in order for them to be neutral, my protons and electrons have to equal. Protons and electrons do not always equal, only when they're atoms. My mass number is eight. Notice that if we had used the periodic table and used lithium's mass rounded, that would have given us seven. So when they give you the mass, you have to use that mass number, not what's on the periodic table. So to get neutrons, since I know my mass number and atomic number, I would do mass minus atomic number to give me number of neutrons. Okay, let's look at the next one. My protons is 14, so my atomic number also has to be 14. And my mass number is protons plus neutrons. So 14 plus 13 is 27. And since it's an atom, my protons and my electrons should equal. Now I need to look on the periodic table to find out what element has an atomic number of 14. Oops, silicon does. So this is silicon dash mass number, which is 27. So go ahead and pause the video and do these last four on your own, restarting when you're done. So this one was also silicon, and we just saw a second ago that silicon has an atomic number of 14. So my atomic number is 14, so my protons is 14, and my electrons also should have been 14. They gave you the mass number, so 28. And to get neutrons, you should have done 28 minus 14 to give you 14 neutrons. Notice that these both were a silicon, so the only thing that was different was my neutrons and my mass number. For the next one, you had 29 electrons, which means you had 29 protons, and your atomic number also was 29. To get your number of neutrons, you should have done 65 minus 29. 
to give you 36 neutrons. Looking on the periodic table, number 29 was copper. So we have copper, mass number 65. Our next one, we have atomic number 20. So 20 protons, 20 electrons. Our mass number should be 20 plus 20 to give us 40. Looking on the periodic table, atomic number 20 is calcium. So calcium dash mass number 40. This one, we have 57 as our mass number. We need to look on the periodic table first to figure out iron's atomic number. Here's iron, so 26. That's also my protons and electrons. And then 57 minus 26 should give me my number of neutrons, which is 31.